Hey guys, uh, welcome back what's gonna, to what's going to be the final installment of getting this transmission back together. I'm um, just going to go ahead and let you know, basically we're going to be throwing everything back together. Um, I'm not too terribly confident that we actually found the problem, uh, which is frustrating. Uh, but we did find those two points um, of interest that may have been creating the noise. One you haven't seen yet, and I will throw you into that footage here in just a second because I already filmed that and had to order some more parts. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right guys, welcome back. Um, just like the uh, other part, the part two that I released, we're just gonna jump right into this one, pick up right back where we left off. Uh, but my one inch to half inch adapter came in, so we can go ahead and continue right on where we last left this. So this is the fifth gear set right here. Um, this is your, your inner race for the bearing. Sorry, this is the outer race for the bearing. And you have your inner race for the bearing. And it appears as though this is press fit onto the shaft. Um, but when you throw that on there, when you throw that on there, you realize that that inner race, which is pressed on and not going to move, is what this bit here, stops against. Left to its own devices, you have that movement. But if you notice there's these tabs on this, and if you were to put pressure on those tabs, you have no more movement in this shaft. And these tabs also move in and out, so I think there may be just be something go, uh, beyond my knowledge of how this gear shaft works, which will keep that shaft, or that gear tight when it needs to be tight. But even when it's tight and pressed up against there, like I can hold it there, you turn this, you still kind of get that rumbly sound. So what I think I'm going to do is, we're going to leave this be, we're going to leave this be, I'll order a new one of these bearings, and we'll just steal the, uh, the outer race here, and we'll throw it on here, and see if that makes any difference. And I'll get a new uh, new nut for the end, and I'll probably just get a new lock washer too, because they're like a dollar fifty. Um, so why not just get a new one of those? We will reassemble the shaft and continue on from there, and hopefully have solved the problem. All right, guys. So yeah, you just saw um, how I was taking that. Uh, we already took that shaft apart, um, and we got it apart. I'm not a hundred percent sure that we found the culprit but we have all of our parts ordered i'm gonna throw it together um, and just call it a day my hope is i never have a need for a spare transmission again for the forester because having to have replaced it three times now is a little frustrating and i really hope i never have to do it again but it would be nice um, because these particular transmissions at least from what i've been able to find are only compatible on foresters with a five speed from 09 to 13. And because it's that very small window of compatibility and only compatible with one model of Subaru, um, even with like 100,000 miles used on these transmissions, you're still talking right around $1,000, $1,200. Uh, um, ultimately, now that I've done this, I bought two used ones. Um, I probably could have saved myself the headache and just bought a brand new one from Subaru. I believe prior to shipping, because obviously shipping something like that's gonna cost quite a bit of money. Um, prior to shipping, um, a new one from Subaru is about 3,200, 3,400. So you figure 
The first used one I put in was, it had 75,000 miles on it. And I think I paid, geez, I think I paid 1,700 for that. Uh, but I was in a bind for that first one. I really needed the car on the road. I didn't have time to shop around. So it was just what was closest to me and available. Um, and then the one that's currently in the, and this is the one that had the 75,000 on it. The one that's currently in the Forester, uh, that one came down from Canada. That was through an eBay listing. Um, and that one had, I want, I think it was 115,000 on it. And I paid about $1,100. Uh, so you got to shop around. Some people want astronomical amounts of money for these. Uh, some people are very reasonable, but you're still looking in that like thousand dollar range when you hit that even just a hundred thousand miles, which for Subarus is not terrible. But anytime you're buying a new part, you really don't want some of the hundred thousand miles on it. Anywho, I know that was really long winded. I'm just trying to explain what we're dealing with here and why I'm just kind of slapping this together uh, without knowing that I've actually fixed the problem. Um, is because I really hope that I don't actually have to end up using this transmission. So let's go ahead, we'll get everything together, and uh, at the end of this video we'll have a uh, fully assembled transmission. So for starters, um, all of our parts came in. Uh, we have the new bearing for the end of the input shaft. We have the new seal for the end of the input shaft. We have the uh, roller bearing for the fifth gear assembly. We have the locking washer for the end of the input shaft, and we have the nut for the end of the input shaft, as well as a new gasket for the extension housing. Um, I will go ahead and leave part numbers down below in the comments section that correspond with the numbers that just popped up on your screen as I, as I pointed to these. So if you're doing this uh, same sort of project, uh, hopefully I can save you some time and just have the part numbers down in the description. And we'll take this old roller bearing off of here. We have the new assembly here. Remember, we're not using the inner sleeve because that's pressed on and that's a bit outside of the capabilities of the tools I hear, have here in my shop. I've already pre-lubricated uh, the roller bearing here and we'll put it on. And the one thing I did notice uh, right away was in the second video uh, to this series when I was turning these other ones that should be very similar there was some resistance um, there's not a ton but there is a bit more resistance than with uh, this roller bearing in there um, it's not night and day like these are actually pretty stiff when they turn this one not so much uh, but it does feel better there's slightly less noise but again not enough for me to say oh man that was that was what was wrong so that's where we're at with that. Again, just gonna go ahead and slap everything back together and follow along. And then what you need to do is on this large bearing here, you're gonna notice there's a ring that goes all the way around and then there's a portion of no ring. And you want that ring or that portion of no ring needs to face here, otherwise it's going to interfere with these shims uh, and the flange of this output shaft. So that's how that's gonna get lined up. So now you're going to notice on the bearing that there is a dimple in it. 
and just underneath you may have saw it uh, before we put the shaft in here there's actually a little peg that sticks out that's inside uh, the casing here so simply point that down and you're gonna have to mess with it a little bit uh, to get it perfectly lined up but line that dimple up with the peg and that's gonna line your bearing just right and then once you have that aligned just make sure that your new seal is going in nice and straight not binding and is lined up properly and just give it a good press down to kind of drive it home and we're gonna start on the empty half um, as far as applying our RTV again I'm just using a gearbox uh, gasket maker from Permatex Let me save you a little bit of time. Uh, before you start dropping that extension housing down, grab yourself a 27 millimeter socket. Um, and if you find your extension housing isn't dropping all the way down, it's because these splines aren't lined up. And you can just take it and get it on there so you can get enough grip. And just turn uh, the shaft a little bit at a time and keep test fitting uh, until that drops all the way down. And then you can continue on. Alright guys, so wow, what a pain in the butt that is. Um, I can see why people say that they have trouble uh, when it comes to uh, the shaft and putting everything back together. Um, I had to actually take this on and off several times, um, getting the, uh, the gear selector uh, lined up just right. But eventually I got it, and what you're looking for is that this, the gear selector doesn't bind up. Uh, as it goes in right now, I have it in neutral 
and you just have that good side to side uh, pressure and resistance and you can lift up to select a gear you can go down in select a gear and back to neutral again and just have that nice side to side but everything seems to be working right with the gear selector so I'm confident to uh, move on uh, getting all these bolts back in All right, guys, so there we are. Um, everything is back assembled, and despite being very unsure of whether I had solved the problem or not, I can say that I am much happier now. When I turn this shaft, it is just smooth. There's no longer that rumbling, grumbling noise that I was getting from this kind of front area of where the input shaft sits. I can say that I am extremely happy, and I believe we solved the problem. But if you listen, all right, guys. Well, that's going to be the end of this episode. Um, I realize it's a little anticlimactic because we're not actually going to be putting this back in the vehicle right now to see if it um, actually works. I'm pretty confident that it will. Um, then again, I'm not a transmission expert. Um, I'm sure I'm not nearly as clean and as tidy. Uh, avoiding getting any dirt and grime inside the transmission than an actual transmission professional would have been. Um, but I'm pretty excited to say that now that I don't hear anything with that input shaft, um, I would be pretty confident putting this back in my Forester um, if need be. Fingers crossed, <laughs> this will just sit in the corner of the shop and I won't need it ever again. Um, but it's nice knowing that I can at least slap this in and be fairly certain I'm going to have a working transmission should I need it. Um, but that's where we're going to leave it. Um, I'm excited to get this project done because it means I can now clean up all my bench space and we can move on to uh, some episodes here to be a lot more exciting. Um, we're going to be working on that. I'm sure you might have seen it in the background in some of my other videos, um, but that will get a proper introduction um, when I get to working on it. So as always guys, I really appreciate everybody watching. Subscriber counts going up, plenty of people commenting. Um, if you notice something or just want to leave a comment, uh, feel free to leave it below in this video. Um, give the video a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and like I always say, thank you for watching guys.